Hey everyone, uh, hopefully you're having a fun day in the market. Uh, my name's Andy, my channel's Finding Value. If you like making money, if you like looking at data, trying to find those undervalued sectors in the markets to invest in, this channel's for you because I do that for you. I give you some presentations to, to find out what's undervalued, what are the market deficits look like, uh, what does that stuff look like from an investment standpoint. If that interests you, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the content, uh, I'm going to go over 10. I know some people wanted me to look at 10. So here's a presentation I put together on 10. Uh, 10 looks like a very good uh, prospect for the next commodity boom uh, to be invested in. So here we go into the presentation of 10. This is the global 10 use by application. So you can see that 10 is used a lot in solder. This is for soldering components. The next one is chemicals, then tin plating lead acid batteries, copper alloys, and then other. So the majority is solder and chemicals. So the last bull market, just to touch on the last bull market, tin returned an eight to nine X last bull market in the 2000s commodity boom. Uh, the top three producers of tin by countries is China, Indonesia, and Peru. The, the tin stockpile, this is, this is looking at it from today, uh, we've got a disappearing stockpile. The net result is that the LME stockpile has collapsed by close to 90% from around 7,000 tons at this time last year to 790 tons, the lowest ever. And whenever you have disappearing stockpiles or inventory, uh, that's when you need to start looking at the metal uh, in, in all seriousness because that's when prices really start to move. Tin traded on a three-month forward delivery contract is priced at 23,343 per ton, while tin on a 15-month forward contract is priced at 22,423 a ton. So that's called backwardation. And when you have backwardation, it means that you have problems. It means that we need uh, material now. <laughs> and again, this is for major use in soldering for electronics. The tin market, what we're looking at going forward is sustained deficits. Deficits is when uh, the demand exceeds the supply. And over the coming years, we expect marginal but sustained deficits to keep prices elevated, but beyond any extreme flare out and LME spreads, McGuire, sa McGuire said. Uh, the, next, the net result is that tin, one of the earliest metals used by man, is facing a demand squeeze, which is starting to be felt in financial markets and might soon become a government issue if the collapsed LME stockpile is a pointer to a tin shortage affecting the electronics uh, shortage. So I'm gonna go into the market deficit and show you what it looks like from a graphical standpoint. I got this from Alpha Mins, uh, who was a tin producer. I got it from their presentation. Uh, according to the International Tin Association, Tin Industry Review 2020, tin prices are expected to increase as growth in tin markets outweighs new supply leading to a significant deficit. Higher tin prices will be required to incentivize the additional production required. This is the gap that's about to occur very soon. So red is the consumption coming through here. You've got alpha men, you've got existing mine production, you've got the second secondary refined here, and then you've got the required new mine production here. So the deficit is post 2025 right here. This is the deficit and this is the deficit here. This is the ITA incentive price required to fill the supply gap is what they're guessing for a price. We've got metals most impacted by new technology. I just wanted to show you that tin is the leading uh, metal for autonomous and electric vehicles, advanced robotics, renewable energy, advanced computation and IT and other. MIT and Rio Tinto did this study and they said that tin was the Im most impacted metal by new technologies. This is the tin price looking over a very long period. We've got a nice consolidation pattern here which broke to the upside. So tin is most likely going to make all time new highs at some point and probably run quite a bit after it during this next 10 year, 12 year commodity bull market. So it's looking fantastic and it's already moving. These are the top 10 refined tin producers. If you notice, the majority of them are in China. We've got some Malaysia, Indonesia, Peru, Bolivia. 
it's very hard to invest in these directly. I was trying to find investments, uh, but I did find an investment that, that a subscriber had recommended. They are a large producer of tin. It is Elfman Resources. The ticker symbol is AFMJF. At a tin grade of roughly 4.5%, I don't know how to pronounce this, Pama North is the world's highest grade tin resource, about four times higher than most other operating tin mines in the world. The Pama North mine is in production. It has an output of 10,000 tons of contained tin per annum, amounting to 3% of the world's mine tin supply. So they produce 3%. Alphamen are aiming to increase annual tin output and life of mine through incremental production from Pama South and by adding more mines in close proximity to the current production and from within our licensed footprint. The location of Alphamen is in Democratic Republic of Congo. I'm going to give you some more information about Alphamen just to show you. This is one of the highest grade tin resources in the world uh, with significant near term potential to expand the resource base right here. That's them. Great advantage over peers is clear with a tin grade 15 times higher than the weighted average grade of global projects. This is their, their production right here in relationship to other costs. This is known as a cost curve. Uh, this is the all-in sustaining costs, and this is the global percent uh, cumulative global tin mine output. This is their project right here, and this is the market equilibrium price for the cost curve. They are a lower cost producer. This is the current Pama North production profile. So we've got 2020, they're gonna ramp it up quite a bit, and then they're gonna to have to turn on future production planned from near-term targets to fill LOM gap in the future. This is the incremental tin from fine tin recovery plant in here, incremental tin from 10% increase through plant throughput, and then the tin production right now. So it's looking pretty good. This is their chart for Alphamon Resources from a very big weekly long, uh, decade long chart pattern. We came in here, bottomed, and we've been chopping sideways, and we're still in this kind of large pattern. We do have a downtrend break here, moving on up. We'll probably meet some resistance up here, and then when we break the top of this, uh, you're going to see all these metrics change and move to the upside. We could still see some volatility. We could still see a pullback. I don't have a crystal ball here, but it's looking very strong. This is the Alpha Men stands to benefit substantially from increased demand. This is the global tin reserves. Alpha Men owns 8% of the global tin reserves. And then the global tin resources is 4% for Alpha Men. I don't know what the difference is necessarily of reserves versus resources, uh, but this is what they had on their website. So the conclusion here is tin is another metal with a market deficit in the future that should perform well over the next commodities bull market. It does have limited exposure for investment for most people, but that could be a good thing if everyone's trying to pile in and funny, funnel money in only to a, a few companies that have tin exposure. Alphamon Resources looks like a solid investment in the tin area. That's at least from my research. Uh, and again, do your own research as this channel is about financial education, not necessarily about advice. Uh, I just wanted to show you Alphamin, which was, it looks like a pretty good pick to me. Uh, it's one of the leaders in tin uh, from, a, from a global basis. They are currently producing, so they are a producer. And then they also have uh, some expansion that they could potentially do. So I, I like that aspect of it. Uh, I don't know much about investing in Congo from a jurisdiction standpoint. Uh, I'm sure it's got some, maybe some, maybe some jurisdiction jurisdictional issues uh, or maybe not but i'd have to do a little bit further research into that uh, but tin looks like an excellent opportunity it did well in the past it's going to be used in ever greater quantities going forward for this renewable high-tech stuff uh, probably for electronics and solder so i think it's a good good one to go into uh, alpha men for for myself you guys can check for your own and i think tin's a good spot to be looking into right now if you guys like this content, give me a thumbs up. Leave comments below if you guys have any other questions or comments. And thank you for listening. This is Finding Value.